A dynamic raid was carried out on Shifa Hospital in Gaza overnight following intelligence information about senior Hamas officials who had fled to the hospital. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 164th day of the war against Hamas and the middle of the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan. IDF soldiers spent a restless night in the Gaza Strip, with several units being deployed in intense operational activities. In one such operation, a building in the luxury Hamas neighborhood of Rimal, resulting in the elimination of nine terrorists. Elsewhere, the Shifa hospital was searched by IDF units after intelligence was discovered indicating that senior Hamas officials are hiding inside the hospital. The IDF spokesperson's office took an unusual step in announcing this raid and giving some details to the media. The IDF is conducting a high precision operation in limited areas of Shifa Hospital, following concrete intelligence that demanded immediate action. We know that senior Hamas terrorists have regrouped inside the Shifa Hospital and are using it to command attacks against Israel. We call upon all Hamas terrorists hiding in hospital. Surrender immediately. Medical facilities should never be exploited for terror. Hamas must be held accountable. Let's get into the details of the report. To begin, if you recognize the name Shifa, it's because this hospital has been in the headlines before. It has previously been cleared of terrorists, but intelligence reports from recent days gave reason to believe that Hamas leaders have returned to this hospital and were directing terrorist operations from it. When confirmation of this information was received, the IDF deployed units to search the hospital first. The building was surrounded by IDF forces who almost immediately came under fire from Hamas terrorists inside, giving a final confirmation that the operation was necessary. In the exchange of fire, several terrorists were neutralized. So when the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says there are dead and wounded Palestinians in the hospital, they're partially telling the truth. Of course, they leave out the part where the dead Palestinians were Hamas terrorists firing weapons at the IDF when they were killed. But what do you expect? It is important to point out that the IDF conducted full coordination with the hospital management before making this operation. It is also important to repeat that this operation was carried out because of information that the IDF had that senior Hamas officials were in the hospital actively taking part in terrorist activities against Israel. Already during the night, the IDF revealed one piece of evidence that led to this raid, a recording according to which the head of the Gaza Coordination and Liaison Directorate spoke in recent days to the Director General of the Ministry of Health in the Gaza Strip. The intercepted conversation was regarding the activities of terrorist organizations in the hospitals and the need to thwart them. We see that the terrorist organization Hamas continues its military activity inside the hospitals. The conversation begins. We are ready to provide any monetary assistance that may be required. Our request is simple, an immediate cessation of all terrorist activities in the hospitals. The targeted activity of the IDF is not only an operational necessity, it is a global obligation. We call on all Hamas terrorists hiding in hospitals to surrender immediately and spare the lives of innocent civilians who are trying to receive medical treatment. During the five months of this war, 
it has been necessary for IDF forces to enter several hospitals in the Gaza Strip, including the Qatari Hospital, the Kamal Adwan Hospital, and the Rantisi Children's Hospital. Last month, the New York Times, which is considered the newspaper of record in the US, published a report including the evidence that had come into the possession of the newspaper staff, showing that Hamas used the hospital as a shelter and a place to store weapons. The report also gave details of a tunnel network underneath the hospital, which was supplied with water, electricity, and air conditioning. Declassified intelligence documents also show that the length of the tunnel beneath it was at least 200 meters, twice the length that the IDF officially estimated, and that is connected to the larger underground tunnel network built by Hamas. According to the documents, IDF soldiers found underground bunkers, living quarters, and a room that was connected to computer and communication equipment in the part of the tunnel that extends under the hospital. These sections of the tunnel were not seen in the video released at the time by an IDF spokesman due to operational requirements. Hamas shamelessly uses hospitals and other civilian infrastructure to conduct terrorist activities and they barely even try to conceal it because they know most of the world's media will let them get away with it. That is why we need to work even harder to get the truth out. I'm Yair Pinto, bringing you the truth. And I once again ask you to help me by sharing our videos on YouTube and following us on social media. Subscribe to this channel, to this YouTube channel, and invite your friends to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Back to the news, about a month ago, Hamas's largest tunnel, which is over three kilometers long, was found in the north of the Gaza Strip. This tunnel was used by Hamas to move people and materials between the north and south of Gaza at the beginning of the war. The discovery of this tunnel was a turning point in the war, and it took many weeks to carefully search it to uncover all the intelligence information inside it. But yesterday, engineers of the Yalam unit set explosive charges and blew it up, permanently destroying it and preventing Hamas from using it anytime. Another important development I have to share with you is about conditions in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, which is dominated by Gaza City. This week, it appears that there is a new governing power struggling to take control in this region, which has been in chaos since Hamas was pushed out. In recent days, IDF intelligence has observed that trucks loaded with flour entered Gaza City and the Jabalia refugee camp. The disorganized militias and armed gangs that have ruled the streets in Gaza City recently were prevented from attacking these trucks by armed guards who accompanied them and the IDF believes that these guards are affiliated with Fatah and the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. A Saudi-owned news portal managed to get an interview with one of the guards who said that he and his comrades were part of a squad that had been formed with the approval of the Palestinian factions and the national consensus. Their purpose, he said, is to protect the aid trucks starting today and make sure they will not be attacked or stolen. Again, despite this claim, the intelligence assessment is that these guards are associated with Fatah and the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. In any case, a number of unidentified armored men got on the trucks while others walked beside them and prevented the crowd from approaching. The flour loaded on the trucks was successfully transferred to the warehouses of the Ministry of Welfare affiliated with the Palestinian Authority in the El Ramal neighborhood of Gaza City. The arrival of aid trucks to the Jabalia refugee camp was the first in several months. 
Although the Palestinian Authority is a better option than Hamas, it is still very problematic as they do not recognize Israel's right to exist in this land. Israel needs to be careful not to allow the development of any organization near us that instills terror and is ready to use violence. The people of Israel are tired of terrorists and we are ready to defeat evil once and for all. I want to conclude by paying my respects to the fallen Israeli hero, Captain Daniel Peretz, who's 22 years of age. He was a platoon commander in the 77th Battalion, Sar Megolan Formation, an IDF soldier that was kidnapped by a terrorist organization on the 7th of October. Please continue to follow us and share our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, so together we can spread the truth. Most importantly, please pray for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. We need your help because this is a spiritual war and together we will win. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.